Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is David and this is my Sunday mishmash for the weekend. Quickly becoming one of my favorite types of videos to make because I just get to chat about whatever happens to be at the front of my mind. And uh, today we're going to start off with a tag brought to you by Shelley Swearingen. Um, this is the end of the year book tag that everybody's done. I'm one of the last, and, and intentionally, I was trying to avoid it, but I've, I've been tagged far too many times. I know I've been tagged by multiple other folks, it's not intending to do this tag, but here I am doing the tag. Because it's short, it's simple, and it gives me a chance to talk about things I'm going to be talking about again here very, very soon. So question one, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? Yes. I am hoping to finish this this month still. I'm most of the way through. I've got about 200 pages left to go, and I'm absolutely loving this. This is a buddy read that I'm doing with Rachel and Beth Ann. They both finished before the holiday. So I, I was about the midpoint, and they were raving about how it ends, and excited about continuing on, <sighs> and I still need to finish it. I, I don't think I'm going to finish this weekend like I hoped. But I should, in theory, be able to finish it yet this month. And I'm excited to finish it and to be able to talk about it. Second book that I need to finish is War of the Worlds, which I'm buddy reading with Alicia. We took a pause because she needed a pause. And being a gracious buddy reader, I said, okay. We're, I think, through chapter 16. Really enjoying it so far. It's very different from what she normally reads. She is enjoying it. I'm excited to get back to that whenever she is ready to jump back into it. And then the next one that I'm going to talk about is the Landmark Julius Caesar. I've still got about one and a half of the books at the end of it. I'm in the middle of the African War right now. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to finishing that as well. So I was funny reading that with John from Hey Y'all Listen Up. And he finished that very early this month. Chipped away at it slowly. I've marched through one and a half, almost through the first two, and need to get back to finishing that. Ad Chip, unfortunately, has spoiled a lot of those plans because I've done a lot of Mad Ship reading lately. I could probably finish Caesar if I had not marched ahead on Mad Ship this weekend. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? No. I don't understand why you would need an autumnal book. Um, those of you that look forward to that, great, good for you. I, I don't feel any inclination to do so, nor do I feel any inclination to start doing uh, Christmas-themed books and, and winter-themed books uh, here going forward. I, I'm not a seasonal reader. I, I, yeah. Is there a new release you're still waiting for? Do you think I read the newest stuff? I, I do follow some folks that uh, like read all of the Hugo nominations and things like that, and I really enjoy their their discussions and seeing what catches my interest from those. But no, I'm I'm not one that's going to be waiting for the latest and greatest uh, to to come out and get released, um, unless you want to count something like the. Ray Bradbury Library of America volume, which is something I'd love to pick up. I actually saw it in person the other day at the bookstore. I was delighted to kind of just flip through it and see what the Library of America volumes look like and, and what they have in there because I haven't ever owned one. And I was very pleased with what I saw. What are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Well, we have the December read-along of The Hobbit, which I'm going to be leading and hosting. There's two ways that you can join along. I'll have my Discord and my Voxer. You can reach out to me either way. Uh, if, once I get at least two people joining me on Voxer for it, I'll make a group chat for The Hobbit. And we'll, we'll just talk about it. I'm, I'm going to be making a video here soon, hopefully in the next two days, 
to uh, kind of announce a, a reading plan for this and the other things I have coming up. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I think the pace is going to end up being about five chapters a week for those that like to pace themselves and kind of keep where everybody else is at. And it, that's a very, very doable pace for us. Next, we have Lyrical Ballads, which, again, is a, a group read that I'm doing. This is the Poetry Book of the Month Club. Um, so I'm going to be reading this with Aaron Facer and anybody else that wants to join us. We have a Voxer group started on this. There's three of us in there right now. Uh, I'm holding up the 1798 edition, which was the very first edition that was released. This has a lot fewer poems than later editions, nor does it have the infamous preface to the Lyrical Ballads. So we'll probably, unless Aaron also has the, the same 1798 volume, we'll probably read the, the 1802 version, which has almost all of the ones that are in here. I, I believe from looking around it, the, they, uh, in later versions, took out one of the poems, added a replacement, and then added a whole nother, like, set of poems plus the preface so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that and of course i've got the iliad which i didn't grab off the shelf that i'm reading with the eclectic book club that shelly and i host together uh, we just finished fahrenheit 451 had some wonderful discussion on that i'm very much looking forward to to reading that shelly announced the schedule for that one on monday on her channel and uh you should definitely check that out. You should check her channel out if you haven't already. And if you want to join us, let me know on Voxer. We can add you to the group. And we'll, I'm looking forward to diving back into Homer for the first time in about 20 years. Is there a book you think could sh still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? So I don't understand those people that answer this as no. Why... Why are you reading the book if you don't think that there's any chance that you could love it? Is it to check a box and say, I've read this? Is it to, to, to say, well, XYZ are reading this, so I should read it to, to not miss out? I, I don't understand that. I've had multiple surprising delights this year with the uh, first book in the Interdependency series by John Scalzi, and the first Almost two books of the Life Ship Traders by Robin Hobb, Forever War by Joe Haldeman have all been pleasant, pleasant surprises for me this year. So I, I don't understand the people that say, no, I don't think that this could be one of my favorite books. Then have you already started making reading plans for 2022? And the answer to that is a huge resounding yes. I've got the great Lord of the Rings crawl through to Mordor, uh, where we'll be reading it. January through June, one book at a time, because each book inside Lord of the Rings is broken into two parts, essentially. So there's six parts to it, so it'll be one part a month. That I believe it adds up to about 150, 200 pages, uh, roughly in that range per month, which is a very doable schedule, I would hope. Uh, and I'd love to have as many of you along for that as I can. And again, I'll make a Voxer group for that. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me, we, we can start that early, uh, and I'll be making firm plans on that uh, late in December. I'll probably hint at some of those plans when I talk about the Hobbit and Lyrical Ballads breakdown and go over how Shelley broke down the Iliad later this week. And then I've got my Read Every Chaucer and Edmund Spencer projects that I'm doing in 2022, where I believe I've got those both broken down into uh, across 12 months to where uh, both of their bigger works, Fairy Queen and Canterbury Tales, are going to be at the tail end, uh, so the last five, six months of the year, and reading a lot of their shorter works in the beginning of the year, because I've also got uh, the D'Artagnan romances I'll be reading with Tony from An Erudite Adventure. And I think I've convinced him that we should take two months per book on it, just so that we're not trying to cram a 600 to 800 page book in each and every month that, that allows a lot more time to really just uh, 
pace through and enjoy the process rather than trying to to cram everything in and what the, the plans i've already got I, I don't know that i could finish all of that plus some lord of the rings plus some spencer and chaucer plus the eclectic book club pick plus the poetry book month of the club pick I mean, that, that would allow for zero opportunities to do any other reading other than those which would be great still I think I've convinced him, and I think that'll make it easier for other people to say, yes, we can join you on reading The Three Musketeers, because I can read that across in January and February. So that is the end of the year book tag. I'm not going to tag anybody, because we're almost to the end of the year. We've got just over a month left to go, and I'm looking forward to it. So part two of what Shelley Swearingen has inspired for this, she asked me in a comment that I had made, to, to share what are my three fantasy books that I have in my shopping cart on thrift books. And so I, I asked some clarifying questions. And so fantasy not as in the genre, but as in if I had no budget, what, what three books would I want to pick up off of thrift books? So I have three books in my shopping cart on thrift books currently. I'm not buying them because I'm doing the 100 books challenge, which was inspired by Criminali, uh, who is a fantastic booktuber, one of my most recent subscribes, and, and I'm very envious of his pace that he's been going on. And since I've mentioned it, I should probably bring up where I'm at on it. Um, I, I've finished two books the, since I, I announced tossing my hat in the ring on that last week. I finished the Hawk and the Ring collection by Ted Hughes, which was the poetry book of the, the month club with Aaron, and really enjoyed that. And then I finished Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, which I was uh, reading along with Shelley. So I'm, I'm two in. Obviously, these are very short. And I had not started Fahrenheit 451. I had started the Hawk and the Rain, but I'm still counting it because it was a book that I had owned. And I can't even keep up with Criminali and his reading pace. He's already finished eight, including The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, and I, I can't keep pace with that. And I've got 98 more books to go. Hopefully, a couple of them I'll be wrapping up very, very soon. I think the landmark Caesar I'm going to count is just one, because I'm finishing the, the three shortest pieces in there each one of them being like novella length on their own. But I will be counting War of the Worlds as one when I finish that with Alicia. I'll be counting my Mad Ship as like 17 because it's a freaking giant book. Oh, it'll, it still counts as one, as Gimli would tell you. So the three books that are in my cart. So I did a little bit of looking and I, I didn't really go overboard on the if there was nothing, no no budget limit or anything like that, because I don't need that. And, and if you're looking for things that have more ridiculous price tags, I, I do have my <laughs> Amazon wish list uh, in the description of most of my videos where I, from my ideal bookshelf, these are the books that I know do not have yet that are featured on my ideal. Hey, go play featured on my ideal bookshelf videos, which I want to return and do one of those sometime soon and do another one, probably for medieval texts, but maybe for fantasy. Th those would probably be the next two that I would want to do. So I tried to avoid anything that was on those, so that, that left off something like The Annotated Hobbit or The Library of America Ray Bradbury and things such as that. But I did find several that are really, really good. And you're, you're going to get a bonus three here. Because thrift books didn't really have much of a selection for them. But I do want to mention them because I, I did go digging after seeing them. So I'll start with that. The Library of America. After seeing the Bradbury one in person and, and looking and seeing that you know, I got to kind of look at Philip K. Dick. They had one of those, which had four of his novels in there including Do Androids 
three mil electric Jeep, which is fantastic. Um, I got to see what was the other one? Uh, Walt Whitman, which has two different editions of Leaves of Grass and more in there. It's like, you know, I, I could go for having and starting a small Library of America collection because by and large, I, they, they've got 300 and some of them that they've created and, and most of them, at least at this point in time, don't really call to me strongly. Obviously Bradbury at the top of that. But I did find three others that uh, would... I, I do have some others that I want to get back to and, and that draw an interest for me. So starting bottom to top. So these, these are the three that stood out the most. Henry James Literary Criticism, Volume 1. So this is him writing essays on literature and talking about various American writers and English writers. And, and because I'm reading essays currently for part of my mishmash, and I think I'm going to be cutting this shorter because I've got a five-year-old who can't seem to find pants. So I'm going to try to cut this short. He, he's fine. He's playing. Because I'm reading some essays and talking about some of them, that, that stands out to me as one that would be absolutely fascinating, particularly for the essays on literature. Number two on that list would be Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Poems and Other Writings. Because Longfellow, I, I picked up a small volume of his poetry local half price books about a month ago and he's described as being an american romantics poet and from the couple i've sampled out of there i would tend to agree he reminds me strongly of some of those romantics that i absolutely love so i'd love to have and find an american romantics era poet that i could enjoy and i think longfellow is going to fit the bill but more so than him we have ezra pound Yet another poet taking the top spot behind Ray Bradbury, of course. His Poems and Translations volume. I've, I knew that I enjoyed Hound's poetry uh, from the ones I've run into, but it's also the translations that really draw some interest to me because he translated some works, and, and one of those in there is some translations of Horace, which... Horace is one of the uh, writers reading his poetry is one of the things that's on Steve Donahue's Western canon. So I need to be reading those eventually. Unfortunately, it's only got excerpts of his Cantos poems, according to this, but it's I, I'm absolutely fascinated and would love to pick up Ezra Pound. Do, do, do they have a, like a, a British a Library of Britain? set of volumes that they're making because there's so many British authors that I would love to, to have something along the lines of what the Library of America does for American authors on my shelf. So the, the thrift books, the three books that are in that cart, I've got Complete Poems, second edition by John Keats. This is a Penguin classic with the Complete Poems of John Keats. As Steve Donahue said in his Q&A answer to my question, Keats is the, his favorite of the Romantics post because he's the best. And that's all he said about it. I don't disagree. Like, Keats is fantastic. And one of the collections that's inevitably in there because it's the complete poems is going to be the, the January Poetry Book of the Month Club that we'll be reading. So I'm excited to do that. I need to, I realize I didn't have Keats on my shelf yet and I need to fix that. I also have in there the Penguin Classics of Metamorphosis by Ovid. Ovid. I, with, with this reading with Shelley, I looked at my shelf. I've got the Iliad, I've got the Odyssey, I've got the Aeneid. I need the Metamorphosis to, to round out the great ancient epic poets. Uh, and I would love to have that one with me. And then... The, the most substantial of these is A Guide to Old English by Fred C. Robinson. This is probably more textbook than actual book, but I, I 
been slowly chipping away at self-teaching myself old English. And I think a book like this would help speed along the process. Because it is a very slow process and it's something that I need to dedicate more time to. And I just I run out of time like everybody else. So Shelly, there you go. There, there's my fantasy three in the cart, plus some extras, plus the reference to the Amazon wish list. So there, there's plenty of options if you want to know what I'm interested in picking up. But I won't be picking up any of them myself until I've read 98 more books. Thank you, Criminali, for that. <laughs> Which my, my wife, I told her about that because I told her about uh, Greg from another Bibliophile Reads and his video that he made announcing that he was joining in because he mentioned to his wife over the dinner table what uh, the, these idiot booktubers are doing. And she thought that was a great idea that he should do it. So he, he uh, is not excited about having to read 100 books before he can buy any new ones. I, I feel your pain. But my wife also doesn't think that I should be allowed any kinds of bookish gifts from people. And that's where we disagree. That <laughs> if, if I get a book for Christmas, it doesn't count against that. If I get an Amazon gift card for Christmas, we'll see. I, I could be convinced not to spend it on books. I've got other hobbies. So I've kind of mentioned what I've been reading. Um, I'm going to move quickly. So I read Essay, uh, Women by G.K. Chesterton. It was fine. Uh, this was, this volume was published in 2000. It wouldn't be included if somebody was publishing it today. It, it would be absolutely, it would rile up some groups. But I, I thought the premise of it was really interesting that he was saying that women that, that women have the benefit of being able to be creative in their daily lives. They, they can get creative in making meals and how they do things around the house and things of that nature. Whereas if you go and try to be creative doing accounting, you're going to get in trouble because you should be doing that. You can't have that creative outlet. And so he was envious of their ability to, to be able to be creative if they choose in you know, what they do for their daily tasks. So this next week, I'm going to be reading King Lear's Daughter by Maurice Baring. I'll have that in the description below. I've also been reading more Conan, enjoying that tremendously. And then the short story that I'll be reading from uh, the Norton literature here. I've got a couple here. So I'm going to be reading 2020 by Linda Brewer, Superman by Jules Pfeiffer, and... Cathedral by Raymond Carver. So it's going to be a, a longer chunk because Cathedral looks like it's uh, about 12 pages long. But uh, I, I think those three would be a nice manageable set. The poems in the short story that I read out of there for the last week were fine. The poems were very, very introductory. <laughs> none, none of them stood out. Even the key to one was easily the best of them, but didn't stand out. And then the last thing, the, the games that I've been playing lately, played Century, A New World, last night with my wife. It's a worker placement game set in the same world as games like Century Spice Road. So if you know board games at all, you might have heard of Century Spice Road. This is, they made a trilogy of games that are each different in how they operate. And they also have rules contained in this one on how to combine them all into one big game, uh, which sounds interesting to me. I played a quick solo game of Cloud Age. This is by Alexander Pfister, who is one of my absolute favorite designers of board games, and I, I think I'm going to enjoy this one a lot. I'm hoping to play it tonight. Uh, if we have our friend come over, we're going to hopefully play that. Played some more Marvel Champions. I'm loving this to pieces. Absolutely loving this. I'm in the middle of fighting the Wrecking Crew right now with Miss Marvel and having a, a good time navigating that. And then just the other day, I met up with a friend. I think it was on Friday. Days are blurring together. And we played two games. We played The Last Hundred Yards, which is a World War II war game, which was fine. 
World War II is certainly not my, my favorite topic uh, to, to explore. And, and the mechanics of it were pretty interesting as a whole. Uh, I had a good time with it. And then we played Descent Roads to Darkness or some other tagline after it. Basically, it's a new edition. It's a very big box uh, game called Descent. It's like the third edition of Descent. Uh, very app-driven game. And so it will tell you all the story and you you know, drag things on there and gives you choices and it it controls the enemies that it generates on the map and so you're you're fighting enemies and you're exploring this first scenario we're exploring into uh I think some kind of a church or something. Some big structure. And we got quite a ways into it. And paused for to, to continue next week. So if you like fantasy if you like dungeon crawly type things this, this one looks like it's going to be a fun one uh, cooperative experience with people uh, where you one of, the, one of the most interesting facets of it is your your character card your weapon card they're double-sided so you can flip them um, and so each side has something different so for instance i had a warrior who wielded a sword on one side and then i could flip that over and it became a, a warhammer i think which is really interesting because it gives you different weapon styles because enemies are weak to certain uh, weapon types, but you don't know what it, what they're weak to until you hit them with that thing and it, it reveals that they're weak against piercing. So, okay, well, now we need anybody that has a piercing weapon to come up here and, and hit it because it's going to do more damage and things like that. Really interesting. So I, I think it's going to have a, a long narrative campaign. But, um, we'll see how much of it we tip away at. And uh, that's all I'm going to do because I've got uh, lots to do and kids wanting my attention. So I'm not going to make them wait any longer. So thank you, BookTube. Have a great rest of your weekend.